as they say in Costa Rica, which means the simple life. It's very laid back in Costa Rica, and I just got off a phenomenal week with Virtuoso Travel Week. All sorts of inspiring information and destinations, and I'm so excited to talk to you about what I, uh, my experience with everybody. It was a gathering, and it was a virtual experience, which was just unbelievable. There was anywhere from four to 6,000 travel advisors and uh, our travel partners that we network with to build the wonderful itineraries that we're able to bring to you. So we were able to have one-on-one -on -one networking experiences where they were 10 minutes. So uh, the one day I had 23 appointments. Some people do 40 or 50 in a day. Um, but I was also working in some educational seminars as well. So it was started on Tuesday and finished on Thursday. And so it was just absolutely amazing. And I got so inspired. And last minute, I decided I'm going to do Costa Rica this week when I come to you live. And so that's what we're doing. We're doing Costa Rica. And I absolutely love Costa Rica. So I'm really excited tonight. I am Julie Johnston with Travel Light by JJ, creating effortless luxury travel itineraries for inspired experiences and lifestyles for the busy professionals, active aging travelers, and groups. And so what I love to do is take experiences, you know, inspired experiences that you've been dreaming about and make them a reality. That's what I love to do. And I focus in Europe, Mexico, and the Caribbean. And so those are the places that I, I like to really bring to you. And right now there's something called Wanderlist and I'd love to be able to send it to you if you haven't already seen it in my newsletter. Uh, it was something that Virtuoso, who just put on the Travel Week, had uh, designed and created, and it is phenomenal. You go in there, and it's got all different places all over the world, and you get to see all different kinds of activities and experiences that you can have, and, you know, swimming in a cage, in a, you know, having sharks all around you if you wanted to be a real daredevil. Or you could go and have in Australia, you can have fine dining in the bay with a big white tablecloth and linens and, and you eat oysters right out of the ocean, right there, standing up. And it's such a wonderful experience, something that I've not done, but I love oysters. So definitely it's on my wish list for the next time uh, I'm that direction or maybe in a different location. So these are just some things you can think about. And so tonight we'll start off, we're gonna kick off with Eric doing a little travel trivia. Tonight we're gonna have as our cocktail, we're doing a basil mojito cocktail. And like I said, I got the uh, basil out of the garden. So it calls for, um, this is double the recipe because we're having two drinks. So they call for 10, uh, let's see, 20 basil leaves, 10 uh, lime wedges, and then you also have four ounces of your simple syrup, which I whipped up today, and then you also have six ounces of your white rum and a splash of ginger ale. I've never done the ginger ale in a mojito, so that'll be interesting, and then ice cubes. So that's what I'm going to be working on while Eric does a little travel trivia, and how that works is he's going to read two questions, and you, whoever types it the fastest and gets it right. And then if you're watching this later, I'll be doing a watch party later. If you're watching this later, feel free to play and type in the answers if you'd like. And what I do is I go through tomorrow through the thread and see who got the most right the fastest. And then I'll announce the winner tomorrow. So Eric, come on down. Thank you, Julie Day. I love going to Costa Rica with you. I know. I can't we had a wonderful trip. trip. I can't wait to go back. I want to go back again. We had such a great time in Costa Rica. I can't wait to show you all of what I saw from the uh, the partners uh, over in Costa Rica. A lot oh. of fun things and experiences. I mean, it's just a destination that offers so much um, it, it variety. Was, it was one of our most relaxing and fun trips. Very adventurous. Yeah. And we had a great time. We yes. Saw, we saw lots of wildlife. Lots of wildlife. All right. Let me do my trivia. All right. First question. Short and sweet. What is the capital of Costa Rica? What is the name of the capital of Costa Rica? I have to say, as I'm talking to you, we see hummingbirds out our window who flew here from Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> Second question. Costa Rica is known for adventure activity and even known to excite 
thrill seekers. Name two adventure activities which we did indulge in. Name two adventure activities that you can do in Costa Rica that they're known for. Thank you. There you go. Talk to you soon. What are you guys drinking tonight? Let me know. Give me a shout out. I'm getting limes. I decided I'm going to use the uh, squeezer instead of doing the wedges. Makes it quicker. So again, you're doing the, um, and you're supposed to, you're supposed to muddle it. I don't have an official muddle, muddler. So I had put my basil in here and I also just put some lime juice in there and you got to crush all the leaves and get them all crushed up so that you're getting all that good flavor. And then you're going to do some simple syrup which it's uh, a total of four ounces for two, two glasses. Right. Woo! Getting crazy, getting crazy. Who's ever been to Costa Rica? Let me know. And what you did, what activities did you do? Where did you go? Where did you see? How long ago was it? Three. Four. So Eric and I went uh, in June, our first time that we went was uh, in June, about 17 years ago. We actually had just moved here from Key West. Um, actually, so that would be 18 years ago. And let's see, so I gotta uh, do six ounces of the rum. And so we had just moved here and uh, decided to, to go because Eric's parents had given us a timeshare as a gift, which was in San Jose. And so we had also talked with a friend down there who had just gone and just got back. And he had told us about a guide that he had bumped into a local. And so he gave us the name of the gentleman and we um, flew into San Juan and ended up reaching out to him and meeting up with him. And we decided that we weren't gonna stay where we were at. And we decided that that wasn't what we had in mind and that we were gonna take our trip on the road. So this guy had a van, he was just a one-man show, and a local trying to make a living back then. And he had a little black book that he had. So he had a, also a big binder book of pictures and maps and destinations, and he laid out all the possibilities of where we could go. And we got all excited, he said we could do this, 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 and this. And so we went back to the timeshare, and they were having a meeting out there trying to take all the people from the timeshare and take them out you know, from San Juan every day for long trips, you know, three hours this direction and, and long destinations and where you're in the car all day. So we decided, nope, we're gonna get in this car and just go. So we did, we got in the car with this guy, got our luggage in there. I stayed in the back, Eric stayed up at the front and they just chit chatted the whole time. And I was in the back, just enjoying myself, seeing the scenery. He had, you know, a van with the glass on both sides and I was just having a ball. It was great. And we went down to Manuel Antonio National Park and we started there and we go in and we're hiking around and this guy knew all about the nature, you know, so he'd hike around and he's pointing out all the different animals and the different bugs and the frogs and, and, and it was fabulous. And then Eric, he sees a snake and Eric was just like freaking out because Eric does not like snakes. And so the guy's like, oh, here, you know, touch it. And Eric's like, no, I'm not touching it. And he's like getting all freaked out. And he's like, no, I don't want any parts of it. But they also have a wonderful beach. It was oh, a boa wait. constrictor in the water. It wild. was not a boa constrictor. Was, Stop big, being a big and sissy. And it was. It crossed the trail. And as it crossed the trail, I touched its tail. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric was brave and he touched the tail. He wants you to know that. So you want to mix it up real good. And again, you want to muddle it. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, I know, I got that uh, ginger ale. That's what's make it crazy. Thank you. Thank you, getting crazy here. All right, so we're gonna try this out. Get your ice in there. Oh, that didn't make for much. Ooh, but that's getting all the juices. And what's this called? This is a basil mojito. 
And uh, I'm pretty excited because it's our fresh basil from our garden. So it's going to be delicious. All right, Sir Eric, let's try them out. All right, thank you. Give you a little, little fancy fancy. This is why I like coming to these shows. Why? Oh, that's a pretty piece of basil there. Look at yeah, that. but the, the um, some of them have flowered. Ooh. This is, looks Cheers. Delicious. Cheers! Cheers, everyone! Thank Happy you. Friday! Thank you, Julie J. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, my gosh, that's very refreshing. Oh, let me have yours. <laughs> <laughs> back off, back off. So, as we traveled, we then, we ventured around. Like I said, we just kept moving from place to place. We would roll into different areas and, and different towns. And this gentleman had his little black book and he had arrangements with the owners of these really boutique -y places off the beaten path. And he would go and they would let him stay for free because he was bringing us. So we would go to all these amazing places. And back then they were ridiculously cheap. And you'd go and you'd have water views at some of the places. And then one time he took us over to, um, well, I'll save that one for later based on based on trivia we'll, we'll talk about that one a little later but why don't why don't we do a round of trivia because then then i might be able to talk about it more trivia more trivia okay and tonight we're doing chimichurri appetizer which is um i've already laid it out here it's cilantro and it's supposed to be white onion however i did um sweet onion and then tomato and then salt would you bring some salt when you come please and then uh, lime. And so we're going to do that in a little bit and mix that all up. And actually, you can do it with chips. You can do it with veggies. Or you can actually put it on a steak or, or meat. And it's excellent. And so Eric's going to pick us up some steaks. I think he forgot today. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> look, look, there's a toucan. There's oh a my toucan. gosh! I see the toucan. Oh my gosh! I finally get to see the toucan. Yeah, because you have challenged times when we were there seeing oh. one. <laughs> finally got to see my toucan. All right, trivia. There you go. I did forget the steaks. I'm sorry, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow night. All right. Round two. What bird? Uh oh. Is in Fruit Loop cereal box and found. Found in Costa Rica. I don't know. I wonder uh, what it is. I, I, I spoke out of script. What bird is in Fruit Loop cereal and found in Costa Rica? <laughs> Next question. What Spanish names do Costa Ricans use to refer to themselves as males and females? All right. There you go. I'm going to go find myself some big bugs now. There you go. Bye. <laughs> So we did uh, one adventure, which was the zip lining, and we it, it was unbelievable. Our guide would go, and he had a cell phone, and we, we hiked into the jungle, and on the ground are all these leaves, these green leaves marching along, and I'm looking at it thinking, am I seeing things? Like, why are these leaves moving? Well, they have these ants, and they're called either ant cutters or cutter ants, and I think they're ant cutters, but these ants go and cut the leaves, and then they carry a big leaf, and they all march in a line. And so when you see them on the floor, you know, in the jungle, it's just amazing. I couldn't get over it. So then we go, and we get up there, and we're up in these treetops. And so you hike in a good way and you get up in these treetops and you're up there with the TT monkeys and the howler monkeys and our guide, he's on the phone. He's doing, he's doing business. He's lining up other clients and everything and he's getting cell service up there. It was, I was laughing. I mean, because again, this was 18 years ago. And so he's up there doing business and we're doing the zip lining and we were up there with families and everybody was enjoying it and we really had a wonderful time. And then afterwards they take you down and they take you to like a, uh, nature center and you have a whole educational experience and that was that was fabulous another thing we did was we went to La Paz waterfall 
and there they had so much different things going on and the season is typically from November to April is the dry season and we went in June and we still had excellent weather we did not have any um, like it, it might have rained when we were sleeping type thing but our days were we didn't have any interference but you always wanted to have the rain jacket in case so we were at the uh, waterfall and you could hike down into the whole waterfall area, which was just gorgeous. And they had a whole conservatory of uh, butterflies and uh, butterflies. And so you go in there and they're just floating around everywhere. And every time I see butterflies, the monarchs out in my yard, it makes me think of that experience because it, it was, I've never seen that many, you know, and the other thing was is the hummingbirds. Eric and I love hummingbirds and we get so excited because they're right outside of our kitchen window. We have several feeders and the most we ever had was like two summers ago. We had seven that were living here kind of full time for the summer and they were zipping around and carrying on and, and fighting and playing and, and having a great time and we really enjoyed watching them. But you go there and their hummingbirds actually, they were much bigger and way more colorful, lots of purples and and just different colors big that were variety. yeah big variety it was they were just amazing but what I got a little nervous about was they do have their long beaks and there was so many that they're just zooming by your face and coming over your head that I thought I was gonna get my eyes poked out and so I'm standing there trying to enjoy myself but I was a little nervous about my eyes getting poked out Megan's in the rainforest with us oh hi Megan thank you welcome we're having fun in Costa Rica tonight and we're having basil mojitos, which I strongly, highly suggest. They have, let's see, basil leaves, um, lime juice, simple syrup, a splash of ginger ale, which was new, and then you muddle the uh, basil in there and that's fresh out of the garden. Actually, it's a spicy basil, so it's delicious. And then the rum, don't forget the rum, that's an important ingredient. Mmm. So back to uh, our, our travel. So we, we had gone around and we did the whole waterfall and we also did Monteverde, which has a, a total cloud forest and you can go in there hiking and they also have hanging bridges, which are just unbelievable. You gotta go all the way from one side to the other and if you're scared of heights, I just suggest you look straight forward then because it, it is a drop. It is a drop for sure and, and can give you a thrill uh, immediately but we're gonna bring Eric up for a little travel trivia keeping it going well I just had fun looking at the butterflies and the hummingbirds and now I'm back I saw some of the world's largest bugs at that bug museum that <laughs> yeah they were huge. yeah they were big yeah so round three what is the most famous known volcano in Costa Rica there you have it what is the most famous known volcano in Costa Rica. I think it made the news a while back too. I think it had a little extra, extra. A little, little eruption? Yeah. And then the next question would be, Costa Rica spans between what two coasts? So that's a unique, interesting thing about Costa Rica. It has two coasts. Yeah. So it spans between what two coasts? And I think we hit both coasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a... a, a Crystal Clear Beach. We had a Black Sand Beach. Yeah, the beaches are amazing. Yeah. Coasts were good. They. Um, did you do both questions? I did both questions. Okay. What was the second question? Uh, we had the beaches and the name of the volcano. The beaches? No, no. Oh, uh, the coast and the name of the volcano. Okay. The beaches. Uh, we did go to a um, Black Sand Beach. It was Playa Negra. And that's in Limon. And then there's also um, the Flamingo Beach, the Flamingo Beach, which has the pink sand. And what was really cool about going to the black sand, I've, I've never, I didn't even know they had black sand beaches. And so he took us there. It was really interesting. And Eric's mom, she used to collect all different sands. So whenever we traveled, we would bring her back the sand from our destination. And this trip, they. They thought we were staying in their timeshare, but we weren't. But anyway, so we I brought her back the black sand, and she that was unique. She didn't have that in her in her uh, selection of her little bottles that she used to keep. So she loved that. 
but we also uh, had gone out one day and we did the four wheeling. The the like I said, the activities there are endless of what to do. I mean, one day we got a couple's massage and that was wonderful, but another day we had gone four wheeling and I had never four wheeled before. And Eric had to tell the gentleman that okay, my wife's never done any four wheeling. And he's like, okay, you know, all right, fine. You know, we'll put her over here. So next thing you know, we all get going and we go and we have to go through water and you're getting splashed and it's going everywhere. And I decided I don't like to get dirty. <laughs> so I decided right then and there that I couldn't be anywhere other than the front. So I cranked that, <laughs> that four wheeler and I made sure I was in the front of the pack and I was blazing and, and basically I think I was the only woman uh, on the tour that day. So all the men were behind me. <laughs> there was one guide in front of me and then they had one at the back and I was blazing through and we finally stopped at this local place out in the middle of the jungle, which the food was amazing. And we, so we stopped and had lunch and we're having a beer and the, the guy says to my husband says, I thought you said your wife had never done this before. And he's like, yeah, but she doesn't like to get dirty. <laughs> so therefore I was blazing and, and going through all the puddles. But because I was first, we got to a location at the top of a hill or a mountain, I should say. And there was the toucan. The toucan birds take off and they start flying and Eric was a little further back in the pack. So he finally caught up, but he had missed the toucans. So that's why he was referencing the toucans a little earlier because the entire rest of our trip with our guide was him. We had to go and find Eric a toucan bird because he didn't ha want me to come back to the States telling everybody I saw a toucan and he did not see the toucan. We actually had to go to like a bird farm because we couldn't find one just out in the wild. So we actually had to go like to almost like a zoo so Eric could see his, his toucan bird. But we did and he saw it so all was good. And then we were to be driving down the road and you see your two-toed sloths and your three-toed sloths. And we're driving down the road and again, our guide, he was just amazing. He would see these little tiny... Um, frogs on the side of the road and he er, stopped pull blue, over blue dean frog yeah so we we pull over and he tells us get out get out we're gonna go look at these frogs okay so we get out and we look at the frogs and he puts it in his hand and he tells eric here you hold it and he's like it's poisonous and eric's like i'm not holding it it's poisonous i don't want to hold it and and so he's freaking out and he's like i don't want to do this so we, we just let the guide hold it and we just observed uh, and didn't didn't get involved there but Another adventure we did while we were there, we had gone and stayed at this uh, place. And again, the views were stunning of the, of the water. And he took us over to a resort and he kept saying to us, you want to stay at this other place. It's local and it, it's a boutique -y place, but you don't want to stay at the big fancy place. So we're like, okay, fine. So we go over there and they had this like lazy river that came through and the water would come down from the mountains and it was heated actually from the volcano which was Arino. and so that was really cool to see that coming down and, and filtering into the to their pool system and then he took us and captured us at night came knocked on our door and said come come on we're going to see something so he got us in the van and he is going up this r rocky road rocky road bumpy road i mean to the point where he kind of ruined his tires and his car because uh, it was that rocky. But he took us up and it was kind of like an outdoor um, church ceremony area, you know, that you could go and have services with seats and everything and, and a cover. And we're there at night, really late at night, and the volcano was erupting. So we're there seeing a little bit of the volcano activity at night and it was just unbelievable and these are the experiences that off the beaten path experiences that you just don't get by you know going online and searching on the internet I mean these are things that your travel advisor myself can help you with and so it was just delightful so we're gonna have Eric come and do the uh, final travel trivia we cooking what's that we cooking oh yeah we're cooking baby um, so as I mentioned can you grab me a, a big spoon please uh, we're doing the cilantro, the onion, and the tomato. 
And then uh, Eric's gonna grab me some salt. And I'm gonna put some uh, lime in there. So cut up a lime. Oop. Need another spoon, please. That one bit the dust. So put some salt in there. And let's see, in my lime. While you're doing that, should I do uh, round four? Yes, please. Okay, round four. What is Costa Rica's official language? What is Costa Rica's official language? And then, how many species of birds? This is a really good question. How many species of birds are there in Costa Rica? Your choices are A, B, C, and D. And A would be 455. That's a lot of birds. B would be 635. That's more birds. C would be 850 species of birds. Wow. And then D, oh my gosh, 920 species of birds. So how many species of birds are... It's a jungle. It's a jungle. A, 455, B, 635, C, 850, or D, 920. Type it in. You want me to throw the bonus in? The tiebreaker? <laughs> the tiebreaker? Yes, please. All right, tiebreaker for everybody's on. Tiebreaker is a blue zone, quote unquote, is a region of the world where people commonly live past what age? No Googling. A blue zone is a region of the world where people commonly live past what age? All right, good luck. What you making over there? I've got my chimichurri. So this is my appetizer tonight which actually can uh, be paired with chips and or uh, vegetables, or it goes excellent on top of a uh, flank steak or a steak of your choice. But what's, really, in your, what's in your chimichurri? It is cilantro, white onion, which I use sweet, and tomato, lime juice, and salt. So it's super easy, super fast, but super flavorful. And actually... Eric forgot to pick up the steaks, but that's okay because this is actually better when it sits and it really lets those flavors and that cilantro work into it, which half of it's on the floor right now, but I'm going to cut more later. So it really gets going and, it, and it's very flavorful and you really enjoy it. But I'd like to wrap up tonight by saying that Costa Rica is an amazing place. There's so much to do. There's beaches. There's uh, all sorts of activity, light adventure, extreme adventure. So there's something for everyone and you'll really enjoy it. And it's the great outdoors and it, it, you can go there and you feel like you can breathe and you're with nature. And I really feel that people, once we're ready to travel, are really going to want to experience more of the outdoors um, and, and have more social distancing when everybody's ready. So we're going to wrap up and do the answers to the travel trivia. And then uh, we will circle back tomorrow and let you know who the winner was. I'm very excited about going to Costa Rica. That was one of my favorite spots. It was. I, I really, I can't wait to go back um, because there is so much to do and yeah. it's just beautiful. I mean, you friendly, could... Friendly, safe, To, to do beautiful. it right, to do it right, you really need to, Diverse. you know, do... I mean, seven days is hard. You just can't park yourself, you know, because it's nice to do two or three nights in one area, two or three nights in another area. I mean... Ideally, you want to at least try to do 10 or more, definitely more if you can, but a minimum of 10 is what I'd suggest. But Julie J will book you for five if that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the answers, or the questions and the answers. Number one, what is the capital of Costa Rica? And the answer was San Jose. Number, the second question was, Costa Rica is known for adventure activity and even known to excite thrill seekers. 
Name two adventure activities. So you have a, you all you have to do is name two, but we got multiple for you to pick one. Yeah. The country is known for zip lining tours, which we did. Zip. Whitewater rafting, kayaking, hiking, scuba diving, cliff diving. Do you remember that big dive I did? <laughs> Maybe not, but I, I had inspired to. Uh, skydiving, which I will never do. Oh, it's on my list. Yep. Uh, and among other adventures, um, adrenaline, there are other adre adrenaline pumping activities. Yes. Such as touching a boa constrictor. <laughs> uh, what? And living to tell yeah. about it. Yes, it didn't get me. See, I, I wore the snake tonight because... Oh, you did. I, I did, did. yeah. Because oh. Eric's a little scared. All right. What... Uh, let's see, what bird is on the Fruit of Looms cereal box and found in Costa Rica? And I kind of gave it away. Fruit word. Looms, not Fruit of the Loom. Oh, Fruit of the Looms. <laughs> That's underwear. Excuse me. What bird is on the Fruit Loops <laughs> cereal box and found in Costa Rica? And trust me, this is his first beverage, so yeah. I'm a little nervous. All right. Uh, the answer was the toucan bird. <laughs> Which I saw, heading that way. Uh, in Costa Rica, we have six species of toucan. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't And they, they, they can be found in all the habitats, all of which have a wide distribution throughout Costa Rica. I didn't know there were six. And, and, no, and what I also oh. learned is they're, they're cute, they're pretty, they are vicious. They Ooh. are killers. And, no. I mean, like big killers. Oh, yeah. Of what? Uh, of any, like... Um, They'll even go after other birds. But they're good to tourists, right? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. They're, they're pretty from afar. Look, yeah. look, look with the binoculars. Don't get up too close. They but love tourists. Yeah. yeah. What Spanish names do Costa Ricans use to refer to themselves as males and females? The answer is... Ticas and ticos. Yeah. Ticas for the females, ticos for the males. Nice. Ooh, Costa so Rica good. spans between what... To coast. Now this is really interesting. I like this because we saw both. The coasts are uh, was the um, Pacific and the Caribbean. Right? Yes, very nice. What is the most famous known volcano in Costa Rica? Which, when we went on a ride, we looked at was Arenal. Arenal volcano. We could. We were at this place where we were in the pool, and it was our. It was right there. We we're just staring right at it. It was beautiful. Yeah. So. You may not know, but there are more than 121 volcanic formations in Costa Rica, so it's very active, and seven of them are active. Papas, pa, pa, oh, excuse me, Poas Volcano was the second widest crater in the world, nearly one mile in di diameter. That's pretty wide. Yeah. And Arenal Volcano is one of the ten most active volcanoes in the world, which we saw the red balls of, of volcanic, what is it, molten? Something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down through there. yeah. Um, what is Costa Rica's official language? Spanish. Spanish. Costa Rica's official language is Spanish. Through a large number of its citizens are bilingual, though. Um, English, due to its status as the international language of tourists, is the most common second language in Costa Rica. So we didn't have a problem communicating room with Costa Rica. No. We really had a good time. We did. Yep. And I took set, uh, five years of French, and I had never taken Spanish, so we did very well. Yep. How many species of birds are there in Costa Rica? Your choices were 455, 635, 850, or 920. The answer was how many birds? 850. 850 species of birds. Mm -hmm. All right, name them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, tiebreaker. A blue zone, quote unquote, is the is a region in the world where people commonly live past what age? A hundred. A hundred years old. Yes, the Nicoya, Nicoya Peninsula. Yeah, Nicoya Pe Peninsula. In Costa Rica, has been been named one of the five classified blue zones. There's only five classified blue zones in the world where residents 
live even longer than those of the rest of the country. That's pretty impressive. It's really cool. And I never even had heard of uh, the Blue Zone until just recently. Maybe in the future we'll hear about the other four. Thank you for having me. There you go. Thanks, Jill, e. Julie J, I had a great time. Thanks, EJ. So we're going to conclude our evening. Thank you for joining us. If you watch us later on the watch party, feel free to chime in and, and give the answers to the travel trivia. We love seeing all the activity. And you can always go to my website, Travel Light by JJ. And I do a newsletter every other week when I'm not doing this live, which I'm going to now do every other Friday. And then the, on the other Friday, I send out a newsletter. So that's Travel Light by JJ. Thanks for joining me. Have a good evening. Take care. Ciao.